Hey folks, welcome back to Skyward Sword. We just got done with the Ancient Cistern, the fourth dungeon, and we got a sword upgrade. Our sword now does double damage, and we got a weird thing on our hand that is thematically important and, and a, a sure sign of things to come for anyone who has played a Zelda game before. Anywho, now that we have uh, Ferror's Flame, we can head back to the sky, learn a new melody, and uh, that will give us access to another flame that we need to collect. Now, um, because this is the video immediately following a dungeon, that means it's side quest time, but not an obscenely long 40 minute video side quest video time. Um, this is actually primarily focused around one single side quest, um, so that will be the main focus. Uh, but again, if you're not interested in side quests, uh, you can skip this video. I won't do anything plot relevant until next time. Uh, but I highly, highly recommend that you check this one out because this is one of the most notorious side quests in the game. Anyway, uh, rupees and, and goddess chests and all that good stuff too. That is always important uh, for our well-being. Yeah, there actually are goddess chests on uh, Skyloft itself, so th those are actually can be kind of easy to overlook, uh, because by this point you're fairly familiar with Skyloft and you won't really look at the map and you won't realize that there's chests here and not the sky in general. But oh well, 100 rupees, good investment. Barely made that. Alright, so... Where is our first destination, Mr. Me of the past? I appear to be heading, uh, maybe in the direction of Petru. I don't really know. Again, I don't really look at the side quest uh, episodes in advance, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Oh, wait, I remember. I can swim now, remember? So we go down here. You may, I may have pointed this out. You may have noticed on your own. Uh, but yes, a little secret passage down here leads to a chest and a goddess chest that we haven't activated yet. But still, one chest is better than none. Especially when it holds another hundred rupees. Definitely a good thing. Yeah, other than the two uh, silver rupees that we got from the, the Buddha statue in the dungeon, we didn't really get that many rupees uh, down on the surface last time, which is just a sin against humanity, I tell you what. But yeah, I think that's all I'm doing around Skyloft, so let's uh, head over to the other portions of the sky in order to do another side quest. Oh god! Okay, so yeah, this is a somewhat notorious side quest, um, located nearby, uh, the Lanayru Desert. It is the, uh, multicolored island that I believe has been alluded to by a couple NPCs. Mysterious thing. It's a mysterious thing. With a mysterious person, an enigmatic figure, uh, perched atop. And it is, uh, something of a flight, unfortunately. Get over there, way. Okay, okay, there we go. Yes, this multicolored island is home to this multicolored fellow over here, who uh, really looks like a dude straight out of Twilight Princess, if you, Princess, if you ask me. If, if he would give me a good shot of his face game. What a rude guy. He, he will not look us in, in the face. So yeah, uh, his special magical saucer fell beneath the clouds, sent to somewhere into the Lanayru Desert. Uh, and in order to do this side quest, 
well, part part of the side quest, really. Uh, we need to find his saucer, and uh, then br bring it uh, back to him, and uh, that will activate a wonderful, wonderful thing. Anyway, yes, uh, set it up as a dowsing thing, thingamajig, thingamadoodle. And yes, indeed, it fell into the Lanayru Desert. You could probably figure that out just based on the proximity to the Lanayru Desert. But, you know, it's okay. It's alright. Anywho, let's fly on over and drop on down. As you might assume, it is somewhere in this uh, fairly large hub area. And god damn it, you with the... And, uh, if you'll actually turn on the dowsing link. Yes, sir, doodle, it is over there. And it's actually a little tricky figuring out how to get over there. It's, it's kind of crafty, kind of clever. There is, in fact, a time shift stone uh, hidden beneath the rubble over there. Um, it's actually how you will get back to the earlier area if you neglected to activate any of those bird statues. Uh, and shifting this back to the past unleashes several vines into the area that allow us to climb. And that allows us to traverse over here. And I'll admit, this, uh, this took me a little while to figure out. Like, I figured it out once in my original uh, time doing this. Uh, and then I, it took me a while to remember how to do it again for the sake of the video. I think it's an, another one of those pretty cool environmental obstacles. Anyway, the saucer over Hizzle. And yes, we do need Scrapper in order to uh, transport it, so we do have to wait until we've done that side quest. I'm not sure if, if, if we have to beat the Ancient Cistern first, but we do need Scrapper for sure. And there's the man of the hour. And that's the extent of it. I, the majority of the difficulty there is figuring out how to get over there. But before we head back up, there is, in fact, a prize over here. Yep, this chest uh, will have a, a rare treasure in it. Again, not sure if it's always a blue feather. Uh, but now that we've taken care of that, we can get to the nearest bird statue and fly on up to the sky. But of course, that's only half the quest. And, and based on a, a purely time-based scale, it's probably like, I don't know, a thirtieth of the quest. Head back to Fun Fun Island and deliver the fun saucer to him. See, look at him. You see what I mean when I say he looks straight out of Twilight Princess? He's got really weird, gaudy colors and he's kind of a, a, a horrifying clown. And he, he really looks like he's out of Twilight Princess. And I think I. I my, the, my ability to say that means that Twilight Princess had a pretty strong aesthetic. It just wasn't a very good one. Anyway, this guy with his Vuvuzela, um, he will give you access to a wonderful little mini-game. Um, the Fun Fun Island mini-game. It is, it is so fun. It is more fun than you can possibly imagine. Anyway, Gratitude Crystals. A, a genuinely nice thing to have. But yes, the Fun Fun Island mini-game, I'm... I don't hate it. Like, as I said, um... I, I think that the harp minigame is the worst minigame in the game. Game, 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 game. 
Um, but this is definitely second. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's a close second, but it's definitely second. Basically, uh, you pay 20 rupees, except on your first time, uh, in order to play this mini game. That, uh, am I gonna let him explain the rules? Yes. You will be shot out of a cannon, and you will have to, uh, steer yourself using the motion controls, um, to hit certain things and avoid certain other things. Uh, there are a bunch of balloons with this guy's face on him, uh, that you want to avoid, and a bunch of rings that you want to pass through in order to get, uh, go faster and increase your score. And then once you've gone all the way through, um, you want to land on a space on the outer periphery of Fun Fun Island, and depending on which, uh, segment of it you land on, you will get a certain rupee prize. Uh, there's green rupee, blue rupee, red rupee, and the almighty prize, awesome 50 rupees, um, as well as you suck loser, uh, no rupee space. And depending on how many rings you get through, uh, that's the multiplier, and you'll get a different amount of rupees as a prize. Now, the ultimate prize, of course, is to go through all the rings and land on the 50 rupee space for maximum profit. And if you manage to do that, you will get a certain alternative prize in addition to your rupees. Now, of course, all this is easier said than done. So now, what you definitely don't want to do is oversteer. Be sure to be as minute as possible with your movements. And uh, a lot of this, you'll just have to get a feel for it, basically. Uh, plan ahead, look where the balls are, see where the gaps tend to be. Sometimes you can't always make a straight, straight beeline for the rings. But anyway, pass through. And then for the last one, go directly 180 degrees across from the 50 rupee space as soon as you pass through the fifth, uh, final ring. Does that make sense? Uh, if you do that, you will either land right on it or on a loser space, depending on your luck. Um, but yeah, directly across from the circle, uh, okay, look at where the 50 rupee space is, look directly across when you pass through the 50 ring. Like, through the final ring. Does that make sense? When you're passing through the final ring, look where it is, aim for directly across. Good? Happy? Good. Okay, so if you do that, you will get 50 times 10, uh, in addition to a piece of heart. And you will make up, hopefully, most of the rupees you lost doing that extremely frustrating game. But overall, I prefer it to the heart minigame. Because, uh, at least the, the Dodo minigame does not insult my knowledge of music. Anyway, last thing that we're doing in this episode, we are heading to Beetle. Uh, by the way, people, many people in the comments mentioned that you can get to Beetle's Island uh, by sleeping until night uh, on the bed in his shop. I, I appreciate you pointing that out. I'm not going to do it here because this recorded far, far in the past. Anyway, again, he is selling pieces of heart, and I have just enough money for it. No, wait, what? I swear to God, that was that was 800 rupees before. What are you talking, Beetle? So yeah, if if something goes unpurchased for too long, he will double the price. He'll only double it once, but. Still. Thank you. So yeah, that gives me an extra pocket. Otherwise, I would have gotten the piece of art. Honestly, the the pocket was probably a better investment, but whatever. Anyway, I guess that isn't actually the last thing we're doing this episode. Let's head back to the bazaar uh, and uh, forge some items that we couldn't before. Either I didn't have the money or the resources or something along those lines. I don't really know. Uh, but you'll recall we have a uh, unupgraded shield and an up unupgraded bug catching net right now, so let's let's deal with those. I will not have imperfection in my inventory. Oh, I need bird feathers. I will get bird feathers. I I promise. I know this because I've already edited the, edited this video, and I I know that I get the best shield by the end of it. Anyway, uh, when you upgrade the bug-catching net, 
It essentially makes it bigger. I, I think that's the only advantage that it serves. It makes it bigger, so it's easier to catch bugs. It's generally not too useful, I don't think. I don't... I mean, I don't really care. Like, yeah. But I guess, yeah, if, if bugs move faster according to the text there, uh, it's easier to catch. Hmm. Anyway, now let's upgrade the shield. Now, it's not quite as useful upgrading the uh, regenerating shield compared to previous shields, because it regenerates, and so the added durability doesn't matter as much. Uh, but the design is a lot cooler, and you don't really want to wait around in the middle of a combat situation for your shield to recharge. So it's it's a little a little better. And if you got the money and the resources knocking around, it certainly doesn't hurt. It does get a little steep by the end of it though. Okay. But by the end of it, you will have an extremely stylish shield that we will uh, in a few moments learn the name of. Uh, and I am stalling for time until we learn the name of it, so I don't preemptively say it. Yes, the name of the shield is, in fact... Legata Shield. Very snazzy. Anyway, that takes care of side questing for this episode, and next time we'll learn a new song and head off to a new location and all sorts of new things that are very cool. Uh, but that takes care of that, and I will see you guys next time.